Let's take a look at how we can model site topography using Revit's new Topo Solids feature. This new feature replaces Topo Surfaces, which have appeared in Revit 2023 and earlier versions. We'll get started using the default template, as you can see here on my screen, and in that default template we're looking at the Level 1 view. Now, you'll find the Topo Solid tools under the Massing and Site tab in the ribbon, and you'll find that we can actually create Topo Solids in two different ways, either by sketching their boundary or by creating them from an import, something like a CAD file which would contain data that we can convert into a Topo Solid. We'll start with this first option, creating something from a sketch. When we choose the tool, a special mode opens where we can actually trace the boundary that we'd like to have around the topo solid. So to keep it simple, I'm just going to choose a simple rectangle. I can just draw from one corner to the other corner, just really making a space that's large enough for the entire topo solid that I want to be supporting our project. Okay, when I'm done with that boundary, I can go ahead and just click the Finish Edit Mode checkmark, and we will have created our topo surface. So let's take a look at that in 3D. Now we're looking at that big topo solid in 3D. You can see that it's a big flat surface. And we can actually choose different types for the topo solids. If I go into the Properties menu, you'll see some of the ones that are available. We're using a grassland one. It's about 16 inches thick. It includes some grass as well as some gravel over some earth. And if we edit the type properties, we can actually see how it's composed. So similar to a floor structure or a wall structure, we can kind of change the materials and the thicknesses that are part of this solid. Grass is about four inches, gravel is about six inches. Earth is defined to be six inches, but it's also variable. And that means that if the topo solid gets thicker, if it gets uh, higher, in different places, the earth will be the material that expands to fill that space. Okay, whereas grass and gravel will always be held the same. So we'll go ahead and close that on up. Some of the other ones that are available to us in the type selector include a generic 20 foot thick, just earthen topo solid. We have some smaller ones that are useful for making paths out of planks or concrete or asphalt, but we're going to stick with our grassland topo solid for now. Now, being a big old flat topo solid may not be all that useful to us, although we could put a building on top of that. If we want to sort of model something that has a little bit more variation kind of in the elevations, we can do that too. And how we do that is we can go through and choose that topo solid. Then we're going to think about editing it. So we could edit the sketch that would change the boundary but in this case, what we're going to do is actually go through and change the edges and the points that define that. And here's how we do that. So if I choose to modify the sub-elements, you'll see I have different boundary lines, as well as some points on the boundaries. So in a really simple sense, if I wanted to just make it taller at the back of the site, a little bit higher, I could go from my current surface, which is at six inches below the lowest level, level one, I could just raise that on up. Okay, and it's going to pull up that back boundary. So in this case, 18 feet. Let me pull that down a little bit further. So that's one way we can edit our topo solid. Let me go ahead and click away. You can sort of see that when I deselect the topo solid, the contour lines actually appear. And if I want to do something a little more interesting than that, I can again choose the topo solid. I will modify the sub elements and I can change the points. So if, for example, the points on this side need to be a little bit lower, I can lower that side. I can kind of, oh, maybe raise up this point over here if I want to. And again, when I click away, the topo solid will reform itself, and you can see the contour lines adjusting to show me the new profiles, the new contours on top of that topo solid. So we can adjust individual points pretty easily. We can also go through and add points to this. So I could say modify the sub-elements again, and instead of just moving a point up or down, I could actually choose to add a point. Now adding a point gives us a choice. So as we add that point, we can think about do we define it as how high it is above the existing surface of the topo solid, or whether we want to think about it by specifying how high the elevation is above the base point of the project. So that's just kind of a choice over here. We can either place the points along the surface, or we can go ahead and place them absolutely. 
Now in my case, oh, what do I want to do? Maybe I'll place it absolutely, okay, relative to the project base point. So if I want to put in a point there that is measured as five feet above the project base, I can specify that. And then as I add a point, I'll drop it right in here. You can sort of see as I'm about to drop the point, it is specifying really what the current elevation on the surface is. So if I put it out here where the current elevation is lower, it'll actually kind of pop it up a little bit. If I put it back over here where the elevation is currently higher, it'll actually drop the surface down a little bit. Okay, when we're feeling all good about that, I can again click away and you'll see that the contour lines are adapting to kind of show that new shape. Let's go ahead and keep on refining that shape just a little bit more to get the contours we want. So I'm going to choose that and again say modify the sub elements. It's a little hard to see right now, okay, but the points are there, the gray lines are there. Maybe just to make it a little bit easier. I'll just shift over to hidden line mode. That it makes it a little bit easier to kind of spot the points in there. If I now go through and decide to either move points up or down, I could do that to kind of keep on reshaping. If I want to move things around though in the plane, it is probably better not to go through and do that in 3D because it's a little hard to control just by dragging in 3D. You might want to switch back over to the level one view. And there I can see the points, okay, and I can use the move tool there to more accurately locate them. I'll move that point over there and kind of reshape it that way. That looks good. Let me switch back over to the 3D view. Another thing we can do though is, if I am modifying the points, I can actually even choose an entire edge and move that up or down. So I have an awful lot of control over how I can kind of continue to reshape this to be, you know, just the uh, kind of model of the surface that I'd like it to be. Now, as you're looking at the topo solid, kind of in the drawing area, you might notice that there's these contour lines that are displaying on there. And if we want to control those contour lines and how they are displayed, we can actually go through and adjust that too. How we do that is as follows. If we choose that topo solid, we can actually in the type properties control what's being displayed. And let me kind of show you what's available to us. The type properties, you'll find contour display as one of the options. And if we edit that, we can get to this dialog, which lets us control just how often different contours are shown. You'll see that there are some heavy lines displayed. Those are considered primary contours. They're displayed every five feet in elevation change. There's some smaller lines which are considered secondary contours. They're currently displayed every one foot in elevation change. And if you'd like to kind of change those properties, for example, if you have a really steep hillside and you don't want to see all those different lines, you might say that you only want to show primary contours every 10 feet and maybe the secondary contours every two feet. Okay, so we can make it less refined or more refined, just depending upon really what we want to show for the specific view. Okay, that's really determined on a type by type basis. Once we've gone through and adjusted the intervals about how we want to actually see the contours, we even have one more choice we can make to affect how they're displayed, and that is really to think about the line style that they're displayed with. And here's how you do that. There are two different line styles really at work that are really defined by these different model elements, the primary contours and the secondary contours. And if you'd like to go through and change those, we can either change it on a view by view basis. So if you just want to change it in this one view, what we can do is say, let's go to view visibility graphics override. So I'm going to go to visibility graphics and under the topo solids choice, way down here, you'll find primary and secondary contours. So we can kind of keep the lines the way they are currently defined, but if you'd actually like to change them a little bit, oh, let's say for example, I wanted the secondary contours to be not as prominent. I could go through and choose, oh, I'm gonna choose just sort of a lighter color of gray. 
Yeah, or I could even make them white, something like that. If I choose that, you'll see they change back here in the display. Now this currently only applies to this one view. So you could do it view by view if you want to have that control on a view by view basis. If you prefer to have those change for the entire project though, let's show you how you do that. And that's under the Manage Object Styles. So this is where we override the appearance of different things for the entire project, different model categories and their sub-elements. So in a similar way here, if I go down to Topo Solids, you'll find the primary and secondary contours. And you can sort of see both the line weight here as well as the colors. So if I want the primary contours to show up in a different color, for example, I'm going to have them show up in, oh, I'll make them kind of a deep purple color. And say OK. All that. You'll see they're actually now showing up in that deep purple. So you always have control as to whether you'd like to have things displayed differently, view by view, or across the entire project. It's kind of entirely up to you. So hopefully that's enough to get you started with creating some topo solids. Next up, we're going to take a look at how we can uh, cut some voids in those to make room for your building, which will likely be on top of your surface.